Hey guys, I'm gonna wait for some people to get on here live. I think we already got some people on here live. Hey, yep, I see some people clicking on. Want to do? Um, don't really want to do a Bible study tonight. I'm um, just gonna talk about um, how big our God is. I think sometimes we get so caught up in how big our problems are, and and um, we forget that the God we serve is greater than anything we face. And uh, you may notice tonight, Ben has a little more hair than he don't know. That's, that's fuzzy. <laughs> Ben's on vacation. Uh, ben Coleman, my buddy that usually is with me. So uh, Fuzzy's taking his place for the Bible study. But we're not doing a Bible study. We're, we're just going to we're gonna talk. As a matter of fact, if you would, let me know where you're watching from right now. Just, just post where you're watching from and... And also, as a way of testimony, if God has showed himself strong in a situation that you're in um, or have been in, why don't you post it? Uh, encourage somebody today. Um, post on there, you know, a, a short testimony of what God has done for you, how he's brought you through uh, a bad situation. It will encourage someone. Because I was, I was thinking about you know what? The there's so much we could do a Bible study on. There's so much. Matter of fact, there's so much it gets overwhelming when you sit down and you think, "Okay, we need to start and we need to work through a Bible study." There's just a tremendous amount of places we could start, and it's kind of strange because we're in the last days, and 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 I really just want to focus on pro prophecy and. And what's going on and what we can expect what you can expect I can expect to be happening but when you do that and you get caught up in all, all that you miss the deity of Christ you miss the fatherhood of God you miss um, going all the way back to Genesis through the Old Testament there's just so much and so until the Lord really gets me nailed down on one particular subject I I think I'm just gonna come on here and just try to encourage you and talk to you about um, what's happening in our times and how the word of God applies to it and, and, and how God is so much bigger than anything that we're facing whether it be financial whether it be health what, whatever it is there's, there's nothing too big for our God and um, there's so many places in the word of God that we can go and, and I can read to you and exactly that that God came on the scene and did something amazing and mighty for people. But what's really been on my heart is David, David and Goliath. And I know there's so many other places we could go. But, um, you know, David, when he came up there and, and Goliath was doing what he was doing and taunting the army of Israel, they were all talking about how big the giant was. They were all talking about how awesome this man was and they were afraid. But David was talking about how awesome God is and what God had done for him. And I think that's really the message for us tonight is we need to quit talking about how bad things are or how big the problems are in our country and how overwhelming the things that are coming, the wickedness and the immorality and all this. And we need to start talking about how big God is and what God is about to do because he is about to do some things that's going to blow our minds. And, and one in particular, one thing, the next prophetic thing on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. And there's so much um, that has happened recently that just really just solidifies that and, gets, and, and really makes you feel you need to get ready and your family needs to be ready. And, and you can take that as a warning. We, we need to be ready and be looking up. One of my favorite preachers that I listen to, Loran Livingston, he's always, always since I've been listening, I've been listening to him a long time, he, he'll always say uh, he gets up every morning wondering if this is the day God's coming back. Well, I don't do that. I need to do that. And I'm going to start trying to do that because sometimes I get up and it's like, I got so much on my mind or something's going on that I get caught up in, in the day, right? But the truth is we should be focused every day. Is this the day that the Lord's going to come back? Because it very well could be. And I think if we lived our lives like today is the day 
that God could come back. There's a lot of stuff we wouldn't do and a lot of things that we would change. I think the church, if the church really lived like that every day, all these social things the church does wouldn't really be a big, a big deal anymore. It would be more about trying to reach people outside in four walls because once the church is gone, it's too late. Once the rapture occurs, it's going to be bad. It's going to be terrible. Matter of fact, I almost got caught up in that today talking about the Antichrist. I said, well, that would, that would make a good message today. Let's, but um, I'm going to stick with what, what I believe I'm supposed to talk about. So let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And again, please, if you would, uh, just comment where you're watching from. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I just want to read one verse to you. David said in verse 47, he says, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with a sword and spear, for the battle of the Lord's, and he will give you unto our hands. Now that's what David said to this giant. When this giant looked at him and said, Who are you to come against me? David told him, You're not coming against me. You're coming against my God. And any time something comes against you as a child of God, it's coming against God. You have a Father in heaven. The Bible says that as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So I'm a child of God. You're a child of God if you've been born again. So whatever we're facing, um, it's not us that has to do the battle. It's God that takes care of the battle. We have to stand. We have to put our faith in him and trust him. Jesus, one time when they were walking into the town, there was a, a fig tree. And it was fully bloomed. It had, it had all the leaves and everything, but it had no fruit. It had no figs. And Jesus cursed that tree. And when they came back by, the tree had died. It withered up just like that. And the disciples were amazed by it. And Jesus told them, he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, be removed and it shall be done. That's so powerful when you think about it, that we, our faith in God and our faith and trust in what he what he says he, he will do and what we can do through him is the greatest force on this planet. It's the greatest strength that there is, is, is faith in God. And when our faith is strong in God, there's, there's, there's nothing that can shake us. There's no, no anxiety. There's no fear. There's no troubles that come our way that shake us. And that's why our faith is always under attack. The enemy's always trying to attack our faith because he knows if he can get us the doubt then anxiety and fear and all these things can come into play. And what amazed me about David, I might be jumping around a little bit, but what amazed me about David was in an awful situation where the whole army's afraid of this giant. David, this little lad, was had no anxiety. He had no fear. He was amazed that they were afraid of this giant. He, he was dumbfounded that they were letting this guy... Uh, talk down about their God. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if we got like that today? That we got, we, we said, you know what? We're not going to stand for people putting our God down. Nobody, we're not going to stand for people blaspheming in the name of God and disrespecting God and stand together against that and stand up and say, um, you know, you, you can come at us with all this politics and policies and rules and regulations we're going to come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, our God. Because our situation in our country is bad. It's, glo it's, it's gloomy. Uh, but the truth is our God's bigger than America. Our God's bigger than this world. Our God has everything in the palm of his hand. There's nothing that he cannot do. There's nothing that is impossible for our God. The, the sky is the limit when it comes to God. Think about that. The sky is the limit. Uh, there, there's, there's no amount of uh, financial blessings that he cannot bestow on someone. There's, there's no limit on healing that he cannot bestow on someone. There's nobody that's so awful and wicked that he cannot save them if they'll call out to him. He says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we serve a God that has no limitations. There's nothing he cannot do. We limit what he does in our lives sometimes because we don't have faith. 
and we, we, we let what we see discourage us and stop us. Just like me, I didn't want to do a video tonight. I, I, I'm sorry, Beverly, she always says not to talk like that, but the truth is we get down. And then we say, well, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about. Well, I've done and told you when we started, I didn't know what Bible study to even try to nail down and start with. But God's really stirring me that we got to just step out by faith. We've got to just step out by faith. We're, we're in a situation in our time that if we don't step out by faith, there's a lot of people that are, I don't want to put this kind of pressure on you, but there's a lot of people that may not ever see God. They, they, they may never understand that there is really a God. They, of course, ever, most people have heard about God and heard about Christianity and Islam and Buddhism and all this. But people need to see God in you. They need to see that you believe and that you um, are acting on your faith and what you believe. And that's one reason I'm going live tonight. I'm acting on my faith. I believe. I believe if I get on here with the right heart, God will say something through me that will help someone. And that's really what it's all about. Helping someone, reaching someone, encouraging someone. Because there's enough stuff to discourage you. There's enough stuff to bring you down. There's enough people out there to uh, talk about how bad the situation is. Just like in David's time when he was facing Goliath, everybody was talking about how bad everything was. David was the only one that was talking about how big God is and how awesome he is. So I'm going to ask you again real quick, if you would, post on here what God has done for you. Put, put in the comments a situation the Lord has delivered you from, something he's done. And I know somebody will see it and be encouraged by it. There's a lot of people that are watching from around the country and, and will be watching later on that are going through different things. You know, it's amazing with this ministry. We get messages from people around the country sometimes, and and it, it will. It's amazing how somebody in Arizona could be dealing with the same thing, and somebody in South Carolina, um, and, and and it could be marital problems. It can be there's all kind of things, and everybody is going through something. Everybody. It, it may not be something you know major right now, but everybody is going through something, and. It's like over the last five or six years, we've had so much fear and fear mongering uh, pumped at us as a, in an effort to control us, in an effort to try to um, stifle out what I really believe is, is true faith in Christianity. They, they don't want us to trust God as much as we trust a go the government, okay? And, and the fact of the matter is, God has not changed. He's not relinquished his throne. He's not decided that the world's out of control when he's just done. God is fulfilling and doing his plan regardless of what man tries to do. And this same God that all the way from the foundations of the world determined the meets and bounds to where you and I will live and, and who will be born, uh, who our parents will be and, and what our race will be and all this stuff. God appointed all of this stuff long before the foundations of the world. He's also set aside a specific time for the Holy Spirit to come. And when the Holy Spirit came, uh, the birth of the church. And he also set a specific time for, for the rapture of the church. And it's, it could be any minute now. He's also set aside a specific time if he tarries for each one of us to die. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. So everything in our lives is laid out. Why would we not trust him? Why would we not give him glory in every situation? Why would we get so caught up in how bad something might be or how big our problems are and completely forget that we are serving a God, the God, the only God that sees everything knows everything. There's nothing hidden from him. There is no thoughts that get slipped by him. He sees every thought. He knows every emotion. He knows everything going on in our lives. As a matter of fact, Beverly was telling me about Hagar in Genesis, about when she she felt like she was unseen. She felt like she was alone. 
And the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came to her and saw her and talked with her. And this, this person felt that they were completely abandoned. And yet the angel of the Lord went to her and found her. The same is true for each and every one of us. There is nothing that you're going through or will go through that God has not seen before the foundations of the world. And he sees my our birth and our death at the same time. He sees everything through our lives because God's not he's not bound by time and space. God sees everything. I think it's a I think it's a blessing. It's a privilege that we live in this time. Many times I'll make comments like, "Well, man, I wish I could go back to the late 80s, early 90s when things were so fun." And they were fun. But you know what? I think seeing the things that I have seen transpire and seeing the Bible just opened up and fulfilled before our eyes is such a blessing to live in these last days and to know that we are the generation mo most likely to see the return of Jesus Christ. And that is such an exciting thing. So why in the world would we not be joyful? Why in the world would we not be wanting to take every opportunity to tell somebody about Christ? Why would we not want to make it, take every opportunity to tell somebody what God has done for them? how God has healed you, how God has delivered you from a situation, how um, you needed money for a situation and, and the exact amount of money came two, different, two or three different places, but it ended up being the same amount that you needed. I've had that happen. I, can, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff God has done. Why do we doubt him? So let's see, have we got any comments on here? I see my brother David Rogers. Man, good to see you. I hadn't talked to you in a while. Hope you're doing good down there in Georgia, brother. There's nothing. We got some prayer requests. We do have some prayer requests. Here you go. That's the top. Thank you, you can go down. All right. I don't see no prayer requests. There was. I see some cool comments. My God created everything. Let's see. You need Jesus, Stephen, Stephen, is that Spain, right? Yeah. Need Jesus to heal my lungs from asthmatic, CO, asthmatic COPD condition and knee pain. Y'all pray with me right now for Stephen. Father in heaven, we come to you in Jesus' name, the name above all names. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. And Lord, I lift up to you, Stephen, right now. Lord, I lift up to you his lungs. Father, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would touch his lungs. I pray that he would be healed from asthmatic COPD. Remove it. Cleanse him. We, that spirit of infirmity will be cast out. And Lord, I just pray for his healing. Lord, I pray for his knee. I pray, God, that you would touch him right now. Where, and Lord, that he would know right now, even now, that you're touching him. And we give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know what? We serve a God that we can all pray and talk to, uh, no matter where we live, no matter where Stephen's at. I'm, I'm here in uh, Bladenboro, North Carolina. It, God's, he's in Maca, uh, Macon, Georgia right now. He's everywhere. There's, there's nowhere that he's not, so we can pray at all times. Let's see here. He gave me a job when I couldn't find one, Deborah. Amen. He's a good God. God is bringing me through a neck fracture. Praise God. Brother David, doing well. Good to see you, brother. Camo Kim, can you keep me in your prayers for my mouth to stay out of my mouth to stay out of pain and also stay out of pain when I get in my last two wisdom teeth? Yeah, let's pray for Kim right now. Father in heaven, I, I lift up to you. Uh, Camo Kim, Lord, I ask God that you would touch her mouth. I pray for healing in her mouth. Lord, I pray that the wisdom teeth, um, the area there with the soreness and swelling would go away. And Lord, we ask that you would touch her now in Jesus' name. Amen. What you got, babe? 
Can you skip the unspoken from Tammy Bullock? An unspoken right away? Tammy. Tammy Bullock. Unspoken. Right? This is turning into a prayer. I guess this is what God wanted us to do. Um, post your prayer request. We'll pray for you. Father in heaven, we lift up to you Tammy Bullock. Lord, her unspoken request. God, you knew what her request would be before she was ever born. Lord, you know exactly the number of the hairs on her head. So God, I pray right now, whatever that unspoken request is, that you would touch her and answer that request. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. While we're waiting for some people to sign on here or post some prayer requests, um, post your uh, testimony, what God has done for you, how he's brought you through some things. <laughs> David Rogers says he wants me to blow out the gospel. I tell you what, brother, we'll, we'll, we'll blow it out right quick because there's probably somebody watching this loft tonight. You never know. And uh, while we're waiting for prayer requests to pop up, the cross gives us the um, authority in Jesus' name. Jesus gives the authority in his name because of the cross to do what we're doing right now. Before he went to the cross, he took the stripes on his back for our healing. When he went to that cross and his blood was splattering all over the ground, he was shedding his blood for you and I, he could have come off that cross. He didn't have to stay there as far as being made to stay, but he had to stay there if David Pate or David Rogers or Deborah or whoever is watching tonight would be saved. He had to stay on that cross. And so he hung on that cross and died for you and I and rose again the third day. Salvation is not about um, being a good person. It's not about trying to um, uh, do good things. Salvation is about turning from your sin, repenting. You turn from your sin and put your faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. And if you don't know Him tonight, you can know Him. Simply call out to Jesus wherever you're at, ask Him to save you. Turn from your sin, put your faith in Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. We're going to get back to prayer request right quick. Start right now. Caroline Hudson, pray for my unsaved adult children and young grandchildren. Amen. Y'all join me praying for these to be saved. Caroline Hudson's unsaved adult children and uh, young grandchildren. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the power of the cross. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you ever live make intercession for us Lord Jesus and we lift up to you right now and ask that you would uh, intercede on the behalf of Carolyn Hudson and her family we ask that her adult children would be saved and her grandchildren and God we pray that for this to happen Lord and that we would hear back a good report and we give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus name amen and amen man it's getting busy we got people pulling up out here in cars and dogs barking teenage daughter uh, do what man? teenage daughters Teenage daughters. <laughs> Are they grandchildren? No, no, no. Come at Lauren. Oh, uh, yeah. We got teenage daughters. Or a teenage daughter and her Chris friend. Cox. Chris Cox. Play for my uncle. They have a mass in his chest. Come here, Lauren. You on the video? Yeah. You want to pray with us? What's up, everybody? Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Hey, Lauren, I just picked up my boots. Here's Sit down. We're doing prayer. We're doing prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. No, All you right. Can pray with us? Yeah, sure. Chris Cox is, uh, what was the request? His uncle has a mass in his chest. Chris Cox, let's, uh, let's all pray for his uncle, uh, and that mass to, to dissolve, be dissolved. Amen. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. Hold on. Father in heaven, we lift up to you, Chris Cox, uncle, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would touch him right now in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the mass in his chest to, to dissolve, Lord, that tumor to dissolve or whatever it is. God will give you all the praise and all the glory. We pray, God, to give him peace right now, that everything's going to be all right, Lord, and we thank you for that healing power, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's nice to see y'all. I'm gone. You sure you don't want to sing a song before you leave? You sure you don't want to? <laughs> all right. David Pate, well, Jesus loves me. Well, let's get back to it. Let's see. Right under. Are you in the right place? I don't know. Um, again, just post if you would post yeah. post some testimonies on here. Starting there. Pray for my uncle. They found okay. It was Chris. Let's see. Prayers for my 93 year old mom. 
Marie. Marie Kavar Sakafi. 93. Praise God. Father, we lift up Tina's mom, Marie. Lord, we pray that you touch her right now. Lord, we pray that you would heal uh, her, the coughing God. We ask in Jesus' name that you would just touch her. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it. We thank you, Lord, for the long life that you've given her. Lord, we pray that you continue to give her many more years of health. In Jesus' name, amen. Bubba, praising God for giving me so many opportunities to share his word and his love through discipleship. Amen, man. Praise God, brother. Keep doing it. Ben Coleman, I see you're watching, brother. Let's see here. Pray for those being saved. Amen. That's right. God bless you. Jesus Christ is Lord, brother David. Amen. He is good. Angela said, God gave me the strength to keep my faith strong when my son died in February. I'm thankful I could praise and worship him through my storm, knowing I can stand firm on his promises. Angela, I'm not, I can't even pretend to know what you went through and how you felt, but I can imagine having children of my own. And I want to say that testimony right there is powerful. And I know that God, the Holy Ghost, comforted you and was with you through that and is still with you and uh, thank you for that testimony that's an encouragement and we give God the praise and the glory let's see here prayers for my grandchildren and our adult children I think I already prayed for that one let's see here I'm thankful for the gift of life being able to live another day here on earth, Jimmy. Amen. Brother David, let's see. Pray for the nation and pray for the church to be the ambassadors he has called us to be during these last days. Man, that's that's that'll preach right there. That's the truth. You know, I might get in trouble with this, but I I'm, I, I I stay in trouble. There's too many churches. Watch out, dog. There's too many churches that are consumed with the status quo or or, or, or the numbers or how many people they have or, or, or and all this other silly, silly stuff. And what we really need to be concerned with is reaching people with the gospel before it's too late. And that is really the church is the is that force. We are that force that God has left here to carry the gospel. Make disciples. Take the gospel to the lost and dying world. Darbar. Darlene, agreeing with you in prayer. Prayers for family members, healing, provisions, continued closeness and trust in the Lord through over 10 years of difficulties and trials. Thankful God has a plan has unfolded. You know, I want to say uh, thank you too for the friendship you and your husband and the stuff y'all have sent this, uh, our ministry uh, books and materials and encouragement and we want to say thank you for that and I want to pray for you right now father in heaven in Jesus name I lift up to this request for Darlene and Lord I thank you for what you brought her through and Lord I thank you for the difficulties and trials that she went through Lord even though they were tough God I know it's made her who she is but Lord in Jesus name I want to lift up to you her family members we pray for healing provision and God we ask all these things in Jesus name amen I was, uh, well, I'm waiting for some prayer requests to be posted. I was, I was watching um, something today with, no, no, I'm sorry. Beverly texted me something about, um, and I don't know if this is accurate, about the trans um, Christian Beverly. Was that uh, accurate? I don't know. It said it was the number one song on the Apple Store. It was the number one song in the Apostle Christian song was by a trans person. Look, I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know if that's, she hasn't verified that. But I want to say it did make me think about something. Um, the closer we get to the end times, the more deception and the more we're going to have to um, really be, make a stand on the truth of God's word. And that's not 
being mean. That's just being real, standing on God's truth and his word. And so when we see things like this, um, it seems to be really what the media is spitting out today that, and, and trying to persuade us to think, oh, well, it's okay. You know, it's not okay. It'll never be okay. And what they need to know is that they're going to stand before God, the God. And if they're not born again, they're going to hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. And that should be the driving force in us today. Is even if somebody gets mad or you hurt, they say you hurt my feelings or they cuss you out or whatever they do, it doesn't matter. God didn't call us to try to be people's friends. He called us to love them. And if you love somebody, you'll tell the truth. What you got, babe? Valerie. Valerie, please pray for my heart disease. I pray for you right now, Valerie. Father in heaven, I lift it to you, Valerie. I ask God that you would touch her heart right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray even now, God, that she feels your presence and your Holy Spirit coming upon her. And God, we pray for her heart to be healed and restored. Lord, as if it had just would, would just complete, complete, um, complete, just as if it had never been sick, God, if she had never had that disease. God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, we know that you have the power to do all things. God, we know you're the creator of all things. You're the God of all flesh. And so, Lord, we ask for this healing for Valerie right now. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Linda Honeycutt, God bless our nation and leaders that they will turn back to God. Amen. You know, I don't, even, I don't know that they ever were for God. You know, we 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 always, and I know what you meant, and I agree with you. But you know, we we always hear, well, our our country's founded on uh, Judeo-Christian values, and it was. But you know, I don't know that we're a godly. Uh, we're definitely not now a godly nation, but it there's so much corruption, there's so much stuff that has gone on behind closed doors that really and truly, the only thing that we can know is true and sure is that is God's word. Um, I don't trust anything I hear on the news. I don't trust politicians. Um, I just trust God because I know he, he has got the final say. But we'll, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going right now, we're going to pray and ask God to turn America to him. And I'm going to tell you, it would take nothing short, short of, a, of an awakening to change this country, to turn us back to God. And... I pray that God will send one. Father in heaven, we ask God that you would send a great awakening to America. Lord, take us to the place. Lord, will we fall on our knees and we call out to the living God. And Lord, we put our trust and faith in you, not in ourselves and not in our abilities, not in all these things that we depend on, but we put our faith and trust in you. Lord, I pray that you would do something that only you can do, that no man would get any glory and no man could try to steal the glory, that we would all have to say this is God and it is, it is your doing, it is marvelous in our sight. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Deborah says her cousin's name is Cindy that has throat cancer. Let's pray for Cindy. Father in heaven, we lift up to you, Cindy, right now. Lord, right now, wherever she's at, Father, I pray that you would touch her. God, I pray for her throat right now. Lord, I pray for a healing to start in her throat right now in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that you would remove the cancer cells. And God, we pray that you would restore her throat. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Sonia McGurk. Hey, Sonia. I have two prayers. I, uh, I'm a therapist, so I want prayer that the Lord will guide me in order to help each person's marriage, etc. that comes to me in service. Second, for my aunt who just lost her husband for 30 years. Mm. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for Sonia. We thank you, God, for her, uh, her walk with you. And, Lord, we just ask that you would um, give Sonia discernment 
of your will in people's lives. And Lord, those that she's uh, trying to help, God, that you'll speak through her and that they'll hear your voice and not her. And God, that you'll show her uh, things about people, Lord, that, that she can minister to them and help them. And, and we'll give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. And Lord, I want to lift up to you. I'm sorry. Let's see here. Can you get this towel, babe? Her aunt. Yep. Father in heaven, we pray for Sonia's aunt that lost her husband. God, we ask, Lord, for your uh, continued peace with her. Give her peace and comfort. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry about that, guys. That huskies needs a lot of attention sometimes. Mary says, God changed my heart and my whole life when I received Christ 34 years ago at a lunch meeting when a basketball coach brought me, oh, this is good, my basketball coach brought two college players who gave their testimony. There is power in your testimony. I've never been the same. Praise God. Amen. There's power in our testimony. Brady, I see you, buddy. We pray, pray, pray for your help. Father, we lift up to you, Brady Ludlam, right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for his help. I pray that you would touch him, Lord, in a mighty way and give healing to his body. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're just getting on here, I've got mosquitoes tearing me up. If you're just getting on here, hey, we'll grab that thermosail over there. Um, you two or one? Just one of them. We, uh, we just got on here just to, just to uh, talk and encourage you a little bit, but it seems that it's turning into a prayer, um, prayer time, and I... We just want to be obedient to God. So, if you know of any, thank you, buddy. If you know of anybody that's um, going through a, a bad time, a difficult time, and they need prayer, why don't you tag them in this post, or shoot them a text and tell them to click on here and, and uh, post their prayer request. We want to pray for them, and we want to encourage you today. And um, try to get this thermosil. We got some mosquitoes coming out. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, here we go. There's a, um, in the Bible, there's a place where there's this, there's this guy that was at the pool of Bethesda. And he had been there a long time. And the Bible says that he, uh, every time the angel would come down and trouble the water, and when he would do that, that whoever got in the water first would be healed. Well, this guy didn't have any any family or anybody there to help him get in the pool when angel troubled the water. And, uh, you know, when you think about feeling alone and feeling like you don't have anybody to help you, this guy, know, I know he had to be one of the most loneliest people in the world. But the Bible says that Jesus went to him and found him. And when he met Jesus, he didn't even realize who he was talking to. He was, he was so caught up in, in the, the circumstances of his life. Everywhere he looked was misery. People all around him sick and hurting. And it's, it's like our world today. If, everywhere we look, we can see suffering and sickness and persecution. And sometimes we can get overwhelmed and feel, does God see me? But I promise you, God does see you. And when he came to this young man, he asked him, "Would you be? do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made whole? And this man says, well, I don't have anybody to put me in the water when the angel troubles the water. He said that to God, the one that had the power to heal him and the one that actually created the angel. Don't forget who we serve and don't forget how important you are to him. Don't ever doubt. His love for you. We're going to get back to praying. <clears throat> Paula Baker, pray for my uh, learning of God's word. I'm an old believer but need direction. Amen. We all, we all do. We never, we never, uh, never stop learning. Amen. Father, I lift up to you, Paula's request. I pray, God, that you would carry the deeper waters with you. I pray, Lord, that you'd give her more understanding of your word. Show her things in your word that she's never seen before. And God, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Thank you for that hunger that she has in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Jimmy Seller, Prayer Fry Fallen. Dear Jesus, the Lord for you know all that. Pray have fallen. Jimmy, I take that when you say you have fallen. Is that spiritually? Is that what you mean? Prayer for I have fallen? I don't know if that's how you mean it or not, but that's what I'm going to assume. And I, before I pray, I want to say this. And and I'm not I'm not trying to embarrass you, and I'm not trying to put anything on you if that's not what you meant. But I'm just taking it like you, you feel. It sounds like you feel spiritually, but I, we all have at times. The Bible says God is married to the backslider. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, that the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Whenever we fall short of the glory of God, and we all fall short of the glory of God, if if we're not careful, the enemy will cause us to doubt. Uh, doubt God's love and forgiveness for us. And I want to pray that um, God will assure you of his love and mercy. His mercies are renewed every day. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Is that, is that you? No, go ahead. Father in heaven, we lift up to you this situation, Lord. The brother said he's fallen. God, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, that we can call out to you at any time. And Lord, when we call out to you, you hear our cry. And we thank you for that. We thank you for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. The spiritual blind, open her eyes. Amen. She keeps pointing at me and, and doing, but I have no idea what. <laughs> okay. Angela. Angela. Prayer jar. I have a prayer jar at the shop, and people write, write prayers and put it in the jar. I didn't know that they were, but I asked for prayers for the prayer jar. Amen. Well, you know what? God knows what the prayers are in that prayer jar. So let's pray for them right now. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the uh, the prayer jar, God, with all the prayers in it, Lord. And Lord, we ask right now that you would answer those requests. God, we know that you see all our requests. You know our needs before we ask. And so, Lord, we lift up all them prayer requests to you corporately, and we ask that you'd answer them requests according to thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Going back to West Virginia. West Virginia. Thank you for what you do. Any plans for coming further north in West Virginia? Todd, I appreciate that, brother. We, we are may be coming to Huntington, West Virginia in late September. Uh, we're actually talking with, uh, some people are talking with the city about where we could put our tent up. We got a, a red and white tent that we use and we wanted to put it in the city of Huntington. But if God wants us to go in a different direction, we will, but that's kind of what we're focused on right now. So maybe mid to late September, we'll be in the city of Huntington and um, doing a, a tent revival, a tent crusade. Cheryl, I'm going through a really tough time and could use some prayer. You got it. Father in heaven, we lift up to you, Cheryl. God, we know that um, you said in this world we'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. You have overcome this world. So, Lord, I just want to lift up Cheryl to you and, and her situation. I pray, Father, that she would sense your peace come up, coming upon her even now and your peace beyond all understanding. And we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. wait just a little bit more for some people to post some prayer requests and then we're gonna jump off of here. Is that a cow behind you? <laughs> oh, no, that's, a, that's a husky. A very needy. A husky. very needy and uh, husky that we have. Let's see here. Um, Got another one. Pray for Michelle, single mother. Deborah. Michelle. All right, let's pray for Michelle. Father in heaven, we lift up to you, Michelle, Lord, of being a single mom. We know, God, there's a lot of challenges there. Father, we just pray that you would give her provision. 
and uh, wisdom. And Lord, just protect her and watch over her and lead God, direct her steps. And God, we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So guys, I guess we might need to jump off here, but um, we just wanted to come on here and encourage you tonight and just tell you that um, no matter what you're facing, no matter how big your problems are, we they don't compare to God. There's nothing He cannot do. Um, I can't get this off my mind, my heart, so I might have to say this before I get off here. The prodigal son, um, he, he, he made a bad choice. He made a bad decision. He was giving, giving everything that he asked for from his father, and he ran off and he, he wasted it all. He wasted it on the world. He wasted it on partying. He had, he thought he had friends, and uh, they really just wanted him to be a friend because he had all this money. But when it was all said and done, he had wasted everything. He didn't have any more friends. They left him. He had nothing, and he found himself in a situation where he would have eat with hogs. He got that low, and the Bible says that he came to himself. And when he came to himself, he realized, in my father's house, the servants are doing better than I'm doing. I'm going to go back and just try to be a servant. I just want to, if I can just sweep the floors of heaven, if I can just, if I can just get in there, then I'll be happy. The Bible says when he turned to go back that the father saw him from a long way off. He saw him. He saw him. He sees you. And he ran to him and fell on him and kissed his neck and hugged him. He says, the son says, Father, I've sinned against you and God, or see you in heaven. He says, um, he forgiven me, welcomed him back in. Don't let the enemy convince you that you've gone so far away that God doesn't see you. And don't let the enemy convince you that God cannot forgive you. God loves you. As if you're the only person that has ever lived on this planet. God loves you with an everlasting love. What you got, baby? Jimmy responded. Is that Jimmy? Yeah. Well, Jimmy, I don't know if you just heard what I said about the prodigal son. But I really, I think that's for you, brother. Let me tell you something, man. We've all fallen short of glory of God sometime or another. Um... And I've, I've been in that dull place. I've been in that place where you, you, you feel like God doesn't even hear you. You're, serving God is by faith, not by feelings. The enemy will attack your feelings. He will bring doubt. He'll bring um, jealousy and envy of other people and, and what they have or don't have or what you have or don't have. And there's just so many ways he attacks it. Trust God and his word. First John 1, 9, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to repeat it again. If, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jimmy, what I'm going to ask you to do since you've made this public, and by the way, that is an awesome thing. We, sh we should be public with, with, with God. We shouldn't be ashamed. There are a lot of people watching this video, maybe watching this video later, that are struggling with the same stuff, the same issue. They, fall in, they feel they've fallen from grace or they've fallen away from God, and they see you being honest and, and seeking God's help or seeking forgiveness. And so... Right now, I'm going to ask you, if you would, to just call out to the Lord. And I'm sure you've done it. I'm sure you've already done it. But right wherever you're at, I'm just going on my heart here. You call out to the Lord Jesus. And you ask him to forgive you. Confess your sin to him. You don't have to confess it to me or confess it to anybody but God. You confess it to him. You don't need a priest. You don't have to say a thousand Hail Marys. All you have to do is call on that name above all names, that name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. I've fallen short of your glory. Please forgive me. And just like that prodigal, he'll welcome you back in. God never saved you or loved you because he thought you were just going to be the greatest Christian that ever walked the face of the earth. 
God loves you and saved you because he wants you to be with him in heaven forever. And the reason you're at, you feel a need for forgiveness and the reason you feel that you have fallen is a gift from God because the Holy Spirit is what gives you that discernment. If it was not for the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't even think about it. God does everything. He saves us and he keeps us. We have to be obedient to him. My prayer is you've done that today, Jimmy. If you want to make it public, uh, that you, you've gotten back right with God, feel free to post it on here. If not, uh, and you got back, you got right with God, you don't have to post it on here. I'm just saying, don't let the enemy put you in a place where you feel that you're uh, isolated and alone. You're not. You're loved. You're loved greatly. And, um, gosh, I don't feel like I can get off here. I want to tell you that since I've been a Christian, I have screwed up. Um, I've gotten mad and quit preaching and, and, and done a lot of stupid stuff. Um, sin. I've sinned before, many times. And looking back, I can see that, and this doesn't really... It's not something that a lot of people will, will probably relate to, but it's, it, it was true in my case. It seemed as if I felt God's presence stronger whenever I would fall away sometimes. And I think what it is is when we don't feel God's presence really strong and, and, and we feel we're in that dull place, as you mentioned, I think sometimes God's allowed us to walk by faith. And it's not that God's not close to us. It's not that God's not there. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But he's allowing you to walk by faith. And walking by faith is not a fun thing. I know a lot of people, you know, we call, we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith is tough because you can't see where you're stepping. You, you don't know where you're going. You're in a dark room. You don't know where the door's at. And you're just, you're just walking. But you're walking toward his voice. You hear his voice, and that's what we, we go for. We move toward where, he's, where the Spirit's leading us. But when I would try to turn and go back because I was hurt or I was mad or I'd done something stupid, the Holy Spirit would really grip my heart and show me that I am loved regardless of what i just done or am doing. God loves us. He's not going to quit loving us. That's the message that needs to be preached around the world is God loves us. The cross is, is, is the most glorious demonstration of the love of God. An old rugged cross outside of Jerusalem on a hill. Galgotha's hill. The place of the skull. Where they, had, where they threw dead stuff. Is where Jesus hung on a cross. Jesus Christ hung on a cross for you and me. Why? Because he loves us. We had a sin debt that we could not pay. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The so death is what it cost. And God says, I'm not going to sit by and let them die and go to hell. I'm going to send my son to hang on an old rugged cross and die for their sins and spare them from my wrath. If they'll receive my son as their savior. They'll be forgiven and can be with me in heaven forever. And I thank God that he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's, there's no greater gift than the gift of salvation. That's what the Lord's given us through his son Jesus Christ. And when Jesus said he just finished and he gave up the ghost and he died on that cross... He died in my place. He died in your place. And when he rose again the third day, I have the promise of that resurrection power in me, the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that raised him from the grave is in me tonight. And in you tonight if you're a child of God. I'm going to look right quick so if we got any prayer real quick. Guys, I thank you for speaking with me. I know it's been kind of 
pray for Brady's mom, Faith. Is it Faith? Father in heaven, we lift up to you Brady's mom, Faith. God, we pray that you would touch her right now. We ask for your healing virtue and power to touch her right now. God, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I hope you're encouraged. I hope uh, something was said to strengthen you. I know if you'll look through these comments and see people's uh, testimonies and what God has done for them, that's the greatest the greatest thing we can do is tell somebody what Jesus has done for us. Don't get discouraged with what's going on in the world. Don't get down and don't 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 feel that that overwhelmed. Just realize that there's nothing bigger than God. As a buddy of mine told me today, there's nothing bigger than God. Whatever we face, wherever we go, He's already there. He's already made a way. He makes a way where there is no way. He opens a door where there is no door. He closes doors that we don't need to go through. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no beginning for him. There is no end. He's always has been and always will be. And he's not changed. He'll never change. He's not going to become something different. He's always going to be God. And I praise him. I love him and thank him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful night. We thank you for the people that have been on here with us tonight, God, and we had the opportunity to pray. Thank you for the blessing of being able to pray for people. Lord, we ask that uh, you would touch those that need healing. We pray for those that are need spiritual touch tonight, God. Father, we pray for our country. We pray for the leaders of our country. We pray for um, this, this whole world, Lord. We pray that everybody would have an opportunity to be saved, Lord. We know that uh, time is short, and Lord, we just ask that the gospel would just go out, Lord, more than it ever has, through social media, through any offer platform there is, Lord, that people would be reached with the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, if there's somebody watching here tonight, Lord, we know that um, there's a chance somebody's watching this lost. We pray right now, Lord, that they sense your presence and know that the Holy Spirit's drawing them to the cross, and Lord, we pray that they'll put their faith in Jesus. And with the finished work he done on the cross for them, his blood was shed for them, he rose, died and rose again the third day. We pray, Lord, that they'll call out to you right now in Jesus, Lord Jesus, and be saved, turn from their sins, put their faith in you, and follow you. And God will give you the praise and the glory for that. And Lord, we thank you for what you've done. If you make a decision for Jesus tonight, you type in, I am just one. It, it may be a month from now you see this video. And God spoke to your heart. If you made a decision for Christ, you type in, I am just one. You may be the one that this whole thing was for tonight. And we'll message you. We'll find out uh, your address. And we'll send you a package with a free Bible and some literature in it to help you get started on your Christian walk. But you put that in there if you made a decision for Christ. God bless you, you guys. And, um, man, it's been great. We've enjoyed it. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, be accepted in his sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.